thank you so much, Orla, for, for having me here today, and thank you to everybody uh, for being here today. And that's a word I'm going to be saying uh, quite a bit, uh, which is thank you, because I really wanted to be here today uh, to thank UCD uh, and to thank particularly the research and science community within UCD for your incredible leadership. Um, it's the most difficult time for our country uh, and our world. Um, I don't think any of us ever could have imagined living through the last year and a half that we have lived through. Uh, but I am really proud um, of all of the work that has been done in UCD, and the leadership that UCD has shown uh, in helping our country in its darkest days. Uh, and I think exactly what you said, Orla, is entirely correct. I was very struck back when I was in the Department of Health and now in my new role how the response from everybody has been, how can I help? And the projects that you've shown me today, and I won't do justice to all of them now, but to see how UCD researchers have stepped up and looked for solutions and practical ways you can help in our national effort against COVID-19, in our national effort to save lives, um, has been inspiring. Whether that's looking at the issue of new treatments, looking at how we do critical care, whether it's looking at the voice of the child and how we make sure we look after and support our children as they emerge from this pandemic, whether it's looking at public policy and how we embed research in developing evidence-based policy, whether it's about stepping forward when we literally had no personal protective equipment and saying, how can we repurpose our facilities here in UCD to make sure people on the front line have a degree of protection uh, from this killer virus, as it certainly uh, was feared to be and certainly sadly was for the lives of so many thousands of people uh, in our country. So thank you so much to everybody in UCD uh, for the leadership that you have shown. Thank you to Professor Mary Codd, whom I remember uh, sharing a television studio with you right back at the very darkest days of this pandemic when we were saying, what is this contact tracing thing all about and how is it going to work and will it work and will we have enough capacity? And you and your team here uh, showed real leadership and of course in a very practical sense uh, our universities right across the country including UCD have now become uh, real beacons of hope for thousands and thousands of people as they arrive here and I've seen many smiling people today as people get their vaccine because we all know vaccination is the way uh, out of this pandemic so thank you thank you thank you uh, for all for all that you have done I want to talk in a little moment about how we don't go back to normal uh, but for one moment, I want to talk about how we do get back to normal, because there's one area I do want to get us back to normal, or at least as close to normal as we can, and that is making places like this an awful lot busier in terms of on-site attendance. And I suppose it's probably fitting that I'm here in UCD today, because tomorrow morning we will bring the plan to Cabinet to get students and staff back to campus safely in September. And I don't want there to be any ambiguity or any confusion about that. We are going back to campus. We're going back to campus in September. We're doing it on the basis of public health advice, and we're doing it in partnership. Uh, partnership with university leaders, partnership with staff representative groups, partnership with student unions, all of whom have come to the table to share that vision, basically saying that, yes, you know, people have gone above and beyond to keep the show on the road when it comes to higher education for the last year. But higher education is not about sitting at the corner of the kitchen table looking down a Zoom camera, or it's not about the box room, or indeed your bedroom becoming uh, you know, a place that you now have to basically do your whole life being contained within the bedroom. We need to get people back to college campus. And I think and certainly hope tomorrow you'll hear uh, from me detail as to how we intend to do that. So I just want to really thank everybody in UCD who's been working so hard to make sure our campuses can be as safe as possible. And the way I summarise what we're going to do is basically think of a college like a village. And if it's safe to do something in the village you live in, it needs to be safe to do it in the UCD village. So to go from a non-educational point, if the pub is open across the road, the bar should be open in UCD. If the cafe can be open nearby, the canteen can open in UCD. If the library can be open in Greystones, where I can live, the library can be open in UCD. If we can bring children back into classrooms at 30, we can bring students back into classroom-based learning. And we'll have a bit of work to do together on the large-scale lectures, and we'll make a call on them as we go later through the, the summer months. But the, over, the really important message I want to deliver to everybody here, and particularly deliver to students, uh, is that the majority of college life this year has clearly been online. The majority of college life from September is going to be on site. And I think that's a really, really important step forward that we're going to take together. And I want to thank everybody for your work on that as well. So having talked about the things I'd like to go back to normal, let's talk about some of the things we never want to go back to normal. We need to make sure that when it comes to public policy, we don't just say at some point in time, should that pandemic is, you know, that's behind us, it's in the rear view mirror. How do we get back to doing all the things we used to do the way we used to do them? Because I think what we have seen through the course of the last year is incredible ingenuity, innovation, dedication from people. And we need to bottle it. 
We need to audit what has gone well during COVID. What are the things we've seen that we'd like to keep? And then what are the things that we never ever want to see again in our lifetime? And certainly one of the things that I'm really proud about is that we have seen, and I think we have valued as a country, um, the importance of research and evidence. Um, I was remarking to Michelle how in a jurisdiction not too far from here when they're having the referendum on Brexit, a very senior minister said, sure, haven't we heard enough of the experts? Send the experts home. And we know how that went. We have been at our best as a country in terms of COVID-19 when we listened to our experts and when we've made mistakes has been when we didn't listen to our experts. So what we now need to do is we now need to see how can we apply that logic to tackling all the big challenges we face in the world, whether it's how we work, how we live, whether it's the climate agenda, whether it's digitalization, whether it's how we care uh, for people as they age and all the great work that Professor Cecily Kelleher has done on that. We need to now work out how we can embed an evidence base and research voices in the formulation of public policy. And I'd really be interested in working with you, Orla, here in UCD uh, to see how we best do that. So it doesn't just become the exception that when there was a global pandemic, we got all the brains together in the world and worked out a plan. We actually make that the norm. When there's a big issue we want to fix, we bring the best and the brightest together. I'm a politician, I'm a generalist. We have a brilliant civil service, it's generally generalists. We need to actually make sure we embed expert voices uh, to solve challenges, and that's certainly, I think, one of the big lessons. The second is we need to excite the country about research. I think we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity, and that's a hackney phrase that I hate using, but I do think it's true, a once-in-a-generation opportunity to get people excited about research and science, because it's no longer seen as something far over there or something done by somebody else. It's now being seen as having a real impact through vaccination on every single person in our country. So we've just kicked off an initiative called Creating Our Future, with Science Foundation Ireland, where we want for the next 12 months to talk to the country, not at the country, talk with the country, and have a civic dialogue about research, about innovation, what's good about it, why do we need to invest more in it than we do, uh, and what do we want to be really good at in Ireland? And we need to take that conversation and not just talk to ourselves, because in my less than 12 months in this job, I found we're really good at talking to ourselves. The research community is really good at talking to itself. We're not as good, because everyone's very busy, at talking to other people. So why is it? Um, that more men than women are studying STEM, and how do we fix that? Um, you know, why is it that there's greater issues of vaccine hesitancy among some communities than others, and how do we fix it? Uh, and then what are the big societal challenges that we believe research needs to be at the fore? So I'd really encourage, as I know you will, UCD to get involved in that creating our future conversation, and let's bring that conversation uh, out to as many communities in as many ways as possible. And the final thing I just want to say is this. We need to obviously form a new research strategy for Ireland. And it needs to be a research strategy for Ireland, not for my department, not for UCD, not for Science Foundation, for the whole country, where it breaks down silos. I hope the benefit of, for the very first time in our his country's history, having a department dedicated to higher education and research means we can have one plan that everybody pulls together and says, where do we want research to be in Ireland in the next five years? Where do we want it to be in the next 10 years? And what do we want to achieve? And I just want to acknowledge that's going to involve a hell of a lot more public investment in research. Um, I am frustrated at the low level of public investment in research. We need to get to at least the European average of investment funding, public investment funding in research by the end of the lifetime of this government. And that's my plan, and I hope to show you how we're going to get there uh, by the autumn as well. So we have a massive body of work to do. Really excited to be working with you on it. Really proud of the work being done here in UCD. And I just want to, to end where I began by, by thanking you all uh, for your individual and collective leadership and looking forward to brighter days ahead, busier campuses, but also not just going back to normal, uh, looking at how we build on what has been the research successes of the last 12 months. Thank you so much, Gervon